Hello everybody and good morning to all of you. Well, it has already been more than two months we are not able to meet together in church for a service. However, we all, as we all have been saying, church continues. The church is not closed. The building is, but the church is not closed. And I bring you greetings from my home uh, where I am sharing with you this message and also uh, we want to welcome all of you who are sitting at home right now observing our service. We are glad that you have joined us. You could have uh, switched to many other different uh, channels but uh, uh, we want to thank you and praise the Lord that you are here with us and I hope you have enjoyed thus far uh, the simple worship that we have uh, done and uh, the testimonies and the scripture reading and I pray that uh, at some point uh, our service has ministered to you one way or the other. We also want to thank you for your giving for the last two months. Uh, quite a number of you have uh, seen the need to give to the church although we do not pass the offering back around on Sunday anymore because of this lockdown, but uh, you have taken the responsibility uh, and you know the needs of the church and you have been giving faithfully to the, to the church. Uh, thank you for those who have been giving. However, I just want to continue to remind you that we have many, many pastors whom we are supporting uh, in Indonesia, in Sabah, Sarawak, in Philippines, in Nepal and in India and some of these nations also uh, suffer a lockdown and uh, their income has also been very drastically affected and uh, we are aware of that. Oh yeah, and also China, not forgetting this couple in China. Uh, Pastor Kai Xin has actually lost his job. He was uh, uh, ten making in the way he works a job. At the same time, he uh, runs a, an underground church and uh, so he told us that he and his wife have been locked down since Chinese New Year in their home. And of course now uh, in Wuhan, they, they have been let out a little bit more. But uh, he has, he, uh, the pastor has suffered a loss of direct income from the company which he worked at. And the wife is still not very sure if she will continue to get an income because she's working for a Christian organization. So we have actually taken a step to increase a little bit of our support for them so that they'll be able to buy food for themselves and to continue to move on. So as a church, we are committed to our outreaches, to our pastors in different parts uh, of different nations. And so we encourage you, if God has touched your heart and that uh, you want to play a role and a part uh, with us, our cause, our boys home and girls home are still uh, running and um, although all the kids are not going to school they are locked down in the home uh, and uh, so your support will come in uh, very very handy so remember the faith promise uh, i've said this a few weeks ago we had to cancel uh, our mission weekend and thus we were not able to do a Faith promise pledge uh, to take a pledge from you, but uh, we trust that missions has always been in, in our hearts and in your heart as well, that you will continue giving as the Lord speaks to you and lay that burden in your heart. And also on top of that, by the mercy of God, I just don't know why we have actually made some decision to increase our missions. We have uh, started supporting. Uh, Indonesian pastors in Flores. We are working also in one or two other pastors whom we actually have agreed uh, to help them uh, in Sarawak as well. So do pray along with us. And today I have entitled my message, What Matters Most When You Are Alone? What Matters Most When You Are Alone? At this point where there is a lockdown, where the church fellowship, so to speak, have to close and we are only able to meet one another via social network, 
uh, it's uh, very different from the norm now. Most of the time you spend time with your family and if particularly you are the only Christian uh, in your family, then my heart goes with, uh, goes with you and to pray that uh, you will remain strong. But I have a message to bring to you. What matters most when you are alone? In a sense of the word, uh, we are alone, very much alone. We no longer can depend on church services to encourage us. Uh, although we are doing this online, but uh, it's very different from meeting together. You are not able to go to a cell group or to a prayer meeting and uh, uh, whatever which we have been doing uh, in the norm. And I've taken, taken my text from uh, the book of Daniel. And uh, there are a bit of similarities between Daniel and you and I. Uh, although Daniel was not in a lockdown, but he was very much alone and uh, i remember about eight years ago i preached this message in church but now we are in a very very different light and i want to highlight a few thoughts with you let's look at daniel chapter 6 verse 1 to 3 i will just read these three verses first it pleased darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, and the satrap might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to settling him over the whole realm. I just want to put this uh, in understanding that Daniel uh, was brought into exile. He, uh, his home was homeland was Canaan land, of course, and uh, because of the war, uh, Daniel had been brought from his home to the Persian Empire, and here he is uh, plunged into a different nation, a different people, different language different religion and definitely for us in this lockdown uh, in a sense church fellowship is taken away from us for daniel it is the same he no longer can go to the temple with his brothers and sisters no longer can observe the sabbath with his family no longer can observe the passover with his family and so uh, i believe daniel faced similar situation and probably even worse than us. We do not suffer any uh, persecution at all in our country, thank God to a certain extent, but for Daniel, it was uh, a lot of persecution uh, for him. So we find that here, uh, he was alone in a foreign land. Like us, we had no fellowship, no church, no cell groups, no, uh, no uh, corporate worship, no prayer meeting. And in Daniel's case, he had lots of persecution living in a foreign land. Yet, not only did Daniel survive in Persia, but he actually thrived. In such a situation, what was his secret? He became one of the governor in Persia, second only to the king. Uh, the king has set three main governor over his kingdom, and Daniel was one of them. And the king, Darius, had intention, had planned to meet him above all the governors. It would be just like second to him. Now, I want you to... Uh, imagine with me, if you are one of Daniel's friend, you know, if I'm one of Daniel's friend, uh, I'm back in Canaan land and I saw how the Persian took my friend away. And for many years, there have been no news. Of course, in those days, no email, no telephone, uh, no WhatsApp, no messages, no social uh, uh, networking. There is no way I could hear no news at all about Daniel. So if I'm Daniel's friend in the land of Canaan, I would think, 
uh, I think very, very likely he would have left his religion, he would have backslided, he have lost faith in God, and uh, he, he may have been tortured or he may have died, uh, or maybe uh, he has followed after the idol idolatry and followed after the foreign god. We don't know. If you are Daniel's parent, you will be worried sick as to what will happen to him. And suddenly, many years later, you heard of this Daniel. You didn't just hear news of him, you hear fantastic news that Daniel is now a governor in the kingdom of Persia. Who? Daniel? Which Daniel? Hey, the Daniel who was your friend, who visited you, who had dinner with you, that Daniel who stayed in your house, mom and dad, your son is a governor in this foreign land. You and I will want to know what is his secret and let me just tell you some of his secret number one what matters most when you are alone daniel had developed a personal prayer life i think that matters a lot when you're alone in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4 to 10, let me continue reading from Daniel chapter 6. So the governor and the satrap sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could, not, they could find no charge of fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then this man said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against his, him concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satrap throng before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and the satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal salute and to make a firm decree that whoever petition any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish this decree and sign the writing so that I cannot be, so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and pray and give thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. You know, Daniel became the king's blue eye boy. In fact, the king loved him very much and uh, I can understand why because Daniel was a very righteous man. There was no dishonesty in him. He did not take any corruption. He was not corrupted. He doesn't take any money under the table. He was upright. He was righteous. He was the legion. He did his work right. And because of that, the king loved him. The king favored him. But it has caused the other governors and the other, his colleague to be jealous. And they were jealous of him and they tried to fix him up. They tried to find fault with him. And the Bible says they were searching and searching, but they couldn't find fault with him, except for his faith in God. And that's what they wanted to do. So they went to the king and they asked the king, hey, make a decree that no man should pray or make a petition to God or man except to you for the next 30 days. If they break the law, they will be thrown into the lion's den. The king, in his ignorance, signed the decree. The Bible says in verse 10, this is the verse that I really love. In verse 10, And when Daniel knew that the decree was signed, he went home. Would you go home? When you hear that the decree was signed, many of us would go and have meetings, would seek an audience with the king, would try to do something to change. But no, he went home. Home is where he finds refuge in the presence of God. 
And in his upper room, he went to his upper room, opened the window towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as was his custom since early days. Without second thoughts, without thinking, again, without consideration to the risk of his life, he went to his window and he prayed three times a day. Such was this man. The Bible says, as was his custom since early day. Daniel has developed a habit since young, and that was to pray. He has developed a good habit of a personal prayer life. A daily prayer has become a habit and that has made him so strong. So he has no doubt at all. He went and he prayed at the risk of his own life. So brothers and sisters, what matters most when you are alone is to have a good spiritual habit. That's what matters most. Sometimes we think, oh, if only, huh? some people backslided, some people went cold, they say, oh, because I had no fellowship, I had no church to go to, or because somebody hurt me. We have so many excuses for being cold, for being uh, inactive. So many excuses, but for Daniel, if at all anyone can have can give good excuses, it will be for Daniel. But he has developed a strong personal prayer life. When you are alone, a good spiritual habit keeps you spiritually strong. Secondly, Daniel also has developed a personal relationship with God. You know, brothers and sisters, this lockdown got me thinking. I've seen people come and go in church. Some complain about the service. They complain about children's church. They complain about the sermon. They complain about the songs, the lighting, the cell group, the leadership. Or maybe they're not being caring or no love. The list goes on and on and on and on. And so maybe they hop to another church, they seek another fellowship. But really, in my mind right now in this lockdown, when everything is taken away from you, what matters most is your relationship with God. Do you know Him? Have you got a strong relationship with Him? I've said this before and let me say it again. When we were young as students, we had many colleagues, many uh, peers who have went overseas who were privileged to go overseas to study of which we never had. Some went to Australia, some went to US, some went to England and Japan, different places to study. Many came back, but I also noticed many of them came back without their faith. They have lost faith in their God. Whereas I've seen some who have grown stronger in the Lord when they came back. So I was thinking, what was it? When you are in a foreign land, when you are away from family, when you are away from church, when you are away from everything, what is it that keeps you going? It is your relationship with God. That's the real essence. That's the foundation of your Christian life. Sometimes we complain about so many things. Oh, we say, I have no fellowship, I have no brothers and sisters to help me. I couldn't understand the language. I know some people go to Russia and study. Every church they go to speak Russian. Oh, I have no fellowship, I don't have this, I don't have that. That's why I grew cold. But really, really the heart of the matter is how is your relationship with God, especially at this time of the lockdown. I can't be with you in person. I can't pray together with you. I can't preach to you, encourage you. Only through social media like this. How is your relationship with God? That It boils down to that. Your relationship with God, which is so 
vital. See, for Daniel, he was so composed and calm in the midst of a hostile nation. The king, although he favored him, but Daniel knew his God. He had a very strong and deep relationship with God. He knew God like no one else did. That's why in Daniel 11 verse 32 says, The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploit. Daniel could say this because he knew, he knew his God. How much do you know God? What is going on deep inside of you? Many of us probably have a very weak relationship with God or we don't know Him at all. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, this is the time to develop. Learn to hear Him. Learn to know Him more. Read more of the Word of God. Develop a relationship with God. Are you obedient to Him? Is your relationship with Him strong? When you are alone, are you alone with God? Thirdly, Daniel has developed a personal faith in God. That's very important, developing a personal faith. Before this incident, Daniel had a very strong personal faith in God, living in a hostile environment. His obedience to God made him a great man in Persia. His righteousness, his honesty, his faith in God is independent of circumstances. Your faith in God is independent of circumstances or what's around you, or what's happening around you. Some Christian faith is strong only when times are good. Oh, when times are good, they are strong. They, they lift their voice and praise and thank you and say hallelujah. But when times are not good, they sing a different song. They complain and grumble. But for Daniel, his faith in God was unshakable, even to the point of being a martyr for God. He put his entire life in the hands of God. Because when the complaint came to the king, the king has already signed a decree. He, has, he can't do anything and he has no other choice but to throw Daniel into the lion's den. Your faith is not in the church or in a fellowship or in any particular person or leader. When all this is taken away from you, you realize the real thing about our faith is in God. Because of his faith in God, for Daniel, he was able to go through the lion's den situation. Let me read to you from Daniel chapter 6, verse 16 to 23. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lion? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, shut the lion's mouth, and so that they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad, for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in his God. What a strong faith that Daniel had. The king had no choice but threw him in the lion's den. The Bible says the king went back to his palace. He couldn't sleep, couldn't eat and refused 
any entertainment. He was so stressed. But where was Daniel? Daniel was in the midst of the wild and hungry lion. But he was in the will of God. He was trusting and had faith in God. The Bible tells us the Lord shut the lion's mouth and Daniel had a good night's sleep. That is real faith. Real faith is simply trusting in the midst of a storm. In the midst of one hungry lion, you can sleep. Why? Because you had faith in God. You know, faith is a very personal thing. Especially when you're sick, uh, when you're hit with a disease and a sickness, lots of people tell you to do different things. But it boils down to your faith in God. What is God telling you? What God is speaking to you? And so your personal faith, I encourage you, which is so important that you exercise that faith in God. When you are alone, then you know what is your faith based on. Let me just repeat these three things. What matters most when you are alone? Firstly, develop a strong prayer habit. Secondly, develop a personal relationship with God. And thirdly, develop a personal faith in God. Brothers and sisters, when you do that right on the inside of you, and when you develop that, you will weather any storm. Whatever may come, you will continue to be strong. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, as I pray with you right now. Shall we all bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, I reach out and I pray for everyone here who is watching this. Whether they are in the house or in the office or in the room, I pray right now that you will speak to them regarding their walk with you. Whether they have developed a prayer relationship, a prayer habit with you, whether they have developed a relationship with you, whether they know you, and whether, Lord, their faith is strong in you. I pray for each one right now in the name of Jesus. At a time when you remove so many things from us, and what is really, really, really matters is our relationship with you. I pray, God, that you will strengthen everyone here right now in the name of Jesus. And those who feel like giving up, Lord, I bind that thought in the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen each and every one of them, Lord. Strengthen each and every one here right now. Father, for those who are not well, I pray for your healing miracle right now. Where they are in their room, heal them in the name of Jesus. Heal them in the name of Jesus. For those who are discouraged, encourage them right now, Father. May your voice, your sweet voice, encourage them and build them. Thank you, Father for this morning and thank you for your wonderful presence in jesus name i pray amen thank you once again brothers and sisters for being with me and i hope you enjoy this week's service and enjoy the message god bless you and see you again